All right, so we're going to start the alpha testing on battle mode as well as OS5. So OS5 actually has already started uh, alpha testing, but now I've got the new prop file for battle mode um, rolled in um, so it can be tested as well. Um, so there's going to be a long write-up for this because there's actually a lot involved. Um, but first off, I have expanded battle mode. So battle mode, um, actually let me start at the beginning. So to enable battle mode, you can either just swing your blade on, if you use swing on, battle mode is automatically engaged. This is just to make it really easy to activate. You can deactivate battle mode anytime you want um, by holding the aux button and swinging, and it'll play a force sound. So, so I get my force sound active. So the idea is if you were actually in a battle and you wanted to either activate or deactivate, you would just hold the aux button and swing. Now at that time, because I swung on, I've deactivated it. To reactivate it, you can either retract your blade or you can do hold aux and swing again. So I've got my battle mode reactivated. Um, while in battle mode you do have the clash versus lockup being uh, basically in battle mode everything is supposed to be at, basically controlled just by gestures so you don't have to worry about buttons so your clash versus your lockup is depending on when you hit an object what happens with the blade. So if you hit an object and pull away you get a clash effect. If you hit an object and stay you get your lockup, and that lockup stays active. Now you can move your blade like you're battling, but if you pull away, it's if when you pull away, it deactivates. So it's all gesture controlled. There's no buttons. Um, I've also now added drag and melt um, as part of battle mode. So uh, typically, if you have your blade below and you do a clash uh, for lockup, you know, holding your button, you get a drag effect. But when you're actually dueling, and even in the films, there are times where you're going to want to block down low. Um, and also where you're going to maybe want to lock up down low. So now you can do your lock up down low and deactivate it. So drag is taken away from clash and drag is going to be controlled by stab now when you're in battle mode. So in battle mode, I'm going to back up so it's on camera. If you stab down, you get drag and drag will stay active until you lift off the floor. Um, and that lift off the floor is just lifting at an angle. So that's the new gesture. And, and uh, drag and melt have a little bit different gesture. They're more subtle than clash and lockup, just to make it more intuitive. Um, and then in battle mode, uh, melt is actually just by stabbing an object. So you get melt, and you can still use the responsive melt, get your heat up effect, but then when you pull away from the wall, it's going to deactivate melt. So no buttons again. Um, battle mode is just to make all these basic actions of a lightsaber seem more realistic. Um, now, how... Uh, battle mode is working, particularly for the lockup versus clash. Um, it's essentially the, the clash effect is now going to be made up of your begin and end lockup effects. So that's where the style part comes in. And I've modified the library so all the, if you download a new version, um, they'll all have beginning and end lockup. Most styles did, but there were some styles in the library that didn't. I've also added more options. So um, this is the default one. So this has a full blade flash on clash and then it's got a fade out. And what's happening is if you do a clash and quickly pull away, so if you hit somebody's saber and quickly pull away, you're actually going to see the begin lockup and the end lockup in quick succession. That's now what makes up your clash effect. Now for the sound side, it's actually going to play begin lockup and end lockup as long as you have them in your font. Um, so you're not actually hearing the clash sound. Now I've had some questions already, people trying to figure out how this works. I've already tested. It's going to be font dependent, but if you wanted to use your clash sounds, because a lot of fonts only have a couple of begin lockups, um, you can you you can rename your clash to begin lock. Um, get the syntax out of the you know out of the manual and off of Frederick's page, but you can rename them. But not all clash sounds font again font dependent work perfectly, so you're going to want to test that. Um, but essentially, when you're in battle mode, there isn't actually a clash. All that's happening is begin lockup lockup and lockup but if you move your sab saber away immediately after contact so like so that was begin lockup and lockup and the lockup never appeared or played because you did it quickly enough so now this part of it so it's kind of a three-part thing is the begin lockup lockup and lockup are working together but you also have your effect which is the begin lockup and lockup effect you have your sound which is the begin lock and end lock sounds and then you also have your control, which is when you pull away. So typically when you're battling, if you're not going to lock up, you're going to hit an object and pull away anyway. So if you hit an object and don't pull away quickly enough, you get lock up. 
when you pull away is when it deactivates. So some of it is going to also be on, on you for hit and pull away to get your real clash effect. Now the other changes in the library are there's actually options for what you want to be begin lockup and lockup. And right now I've got, uh, I think, three versions or four versions of begin and four versions of end. And you can mix and match them. So this is a full blade clash on uh, begin lockup and then it's a fade on end lockup. And actually, let me change. So now this is a uh, full blade, but it's a dissipate. So now on this Clash version, this is a it's going to be a full blade, and then it's going to be a dissipate. So dissipate will actually spread from your center point based on lockup. So, so you'll see that kind of run up and down the blade real quick. Um, it's a quick one. And then this one will be the power ripple. Um, so we'll get the... And you get that power ripple effect. So combining the begin lockup and end lockup effects is also part of this equation. Now, you get in the lockup, you leave it for a little while, pull away, you're going to get that ripple effect. Um, and then, in addition, I also now have... So uh, we've also got, now you can do a central or a, a localized responsive begin lockup. So typically, the old library, if you have older styles, there was no localized begin lockup. It was always a flash on clash full blade. Now, it's it's localized, it's very quick, and then this one has the dissipate on it at the end. But So if you do it quickly enough, you actually get a localized clash with the dissipate. And again, it's the effect plus how you're controlling the blade that makes that happen. So it's that quick hit and pull away that makes that localized clash and then the dissipate which is spreading up and down the blade um, so and then again I've got one more that's a long font sound and then this one will be the localized uh, begin lockup but then it has the power ripple afterwards so, so that's going to be similar to your clash with power ripple so um, you can mimic pretty close to all the normal clash effects, but again, now with battle mode, your clash effect is actually a begin lockup and lockup in quick succession, and it also has to do with how you control it. Um, so you get in, have your lockup, do your battle, pull away, you get the power ripple. Um, and then over time, I'll add to the library, but basically I have the, I've made changes to the melt and the drag that are in the library as well. So if you have older effects, if you have effects before this, uh, before the change, which was just made yesterday, um, you're going to have the melt and the drag will be a little bit different. Um, and then also you're limited in what you have for the begin lockup effects. Um, so you might not have all the options. So if you want to test this out fully, I would recommend going and getting new styles from the library. The library now supports uh, basically um, these. So the melt area is now made larger. Um, it's to give it a little more... Uh, notice and you can control all of it in the settings but that's just to help with learning the controls and then same the drag there's maybe a larger area you could obviously change the colors and all that but the idea behind it is um, the biggest piece particularly if you're first trying this out is getting used to the motion so the clash lockup the pull away just has to be you know maybe a 15 degree change in angle quickly um, there is a threshold and I'm gonna do the write-up there's a threshold, essentially a new lockup threshold. So you already have clash threshold. That's what tells the saber when to recognize a clash. So if you have, particularly if you have your speaker really close um, to your board, sometimes you'll set that clash threshold really high. That's just so you don't get false clashes. Uh, so the clash threshold is to let the saber know when the clash happens. The lockup threshold is actually it's 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 almost a basically a margin of error. Um, and what it does is it lets you when you really, from practicing, when you hit another person's saber, there is a little bounce that happens. It's just two solid objects hitting each other. You get an opposite uh, reaction when you have that impact. In order to give you time to get that saber stable after the impact, that's what lockup threshold does. So it lets you have that lockup active and pull away. Now, if you find that it's really hard for you to get the clash to work, you're going to lower the lockup threshold. The default is two. That's what I found works best in uh, several different, mm, excuse me, several different sabers. Um, but if you find lockups a little hard for you to, or, or if you find that clash is hard for you to do with a quick pull away, 
you can um, decrease the lockup threshold in your config. If you find that it's going and it's actually you're not able to get lockup to stay, it's going to clash too quickly or end lockup, you're going to increase that number. And again, it's in the write-up, um, but that lockup threshold is a part of the puzzle. The styles are a part of the puzzle. Uh, the sounds obviously a part of the puzzle. But the other part of it that I think took it took uh, when I was working with my my son last weekend, it took him maybe five minutes of practice just to get used to that little pull away. And it's again, it's a little 15 little 15 degree change in angle backwards because um, obviously you're going to pull away from your opponent. And then for melt and drag, it's actually even less. So I didn't, what I was looking for was to make the motions that control everything feel more natural and look natural. So you don't have to do these crazy movements. It would be like as if you were really, if this saber really worked, what would happen? You know, you, you still want to be able to duel, but then when you're getting ready to re-attack your opponent, you're going to pull that blade back anyway. Um, and then same melt is the stab. And then it's really just taking it away at an angle. If you pull it backwards, and, and over time we're going to, obviously, this is kind of the first iteration. As we get better with these gesture controls, there'll be additional movements. But if you do it and you take it away from the wall straight, it doesn't react. So you do need a little bit of a change in angle, um, and that's what deactivates. So getting used to those controls is going to be part of this testing. Um, and then same drag. So you can move it, it's just you want to pick it up at an angle. So um, everything right now is based on, you know, a change in angle at, at a relatively, uh, you know, you kind of get a feel for it. And, and again, part of it depends on your hilt and where your board is in uh, respect to your blade and all that. So a little bit of practice. So if you're first doing it and you're finding it's tricky, um, practice the movements. Um, and that's why, you know, we'll get used to that. And then again, if you're really having a, particularly the clash and lockup, th that, that lockup threshold has a lot to do with that. If it's uh, not letting you get into lockup, you're going to increase that threshold. If it's really hard for you to get the clash version, you're going to lower that threshold and just kind of find the sweet spot for yourself. Um, but everything else is going to be working pretty well. And then again, um, oh, the other parts, um, I think I forgot. In battle mode, the power button's deactivated on purpose. So if you're in battle mode and your power button doesn't work, that's on purpose. You can get in and out of battle mode at any time by holding the aux button and swinging. It'll play your force sound, so the idea is this way you can kind of hide what's happening. And now your power button will work. So when you're out of battle mode, buttons are all the same. Um, and then if you want to go back into battle mode, you can either just swing on. So anytime you swing on, it's automatic battle mode. Um, and then again, the button doesn't work. Um, or if you get out of battle mode, you can get back into it by holding aux and swinging. In battle mode, to retract your blade is just a twist. And twist, if you haven't used the twist, it's a quick back and forth as if you were revving a motorcycle. So it's like that. And it's forward back. If you just turn forward, it doesn't do anything. I have twist on active. That's why that happened. If you only do one motion, it doesn't do anything. It's the quick back and forth that retracts. So with gesture controls, uh, it is a little bit of practice and a little bit of getting used to it. Um, but I've, I've dialed them in based on a couple different sabers to make them work for as many as possible. Um, but your saber still may be a little different, so you still might tweak it. Um, but definitely test it out. If you are testing, I do think it's probably better to get brand new styles from the library. There are changes, like I said, related to what you can do for begin lockup and lockup. And then also I have changed drag and melt on purpose. Um, so new versions of those are in there. And they're just to kind of make it a little bit more pronounced, but also make it a little easier to get the effects you want. Um, and, you know, definitely play around and... Uh, I'm pretty psyched about this. Um, if testing proves out, um, it, there's still the possibility that this stuff becomes default. Um, but just in playing with it and prepping it, I think having it as a mode was the better approach to start. Um, because if you don't like the controls or if you're having a hard time with it, you can just easily get out of battle mode. Oops. You can easily get out of battle mode and still use your saber like you used to. And then anytime you want, you can go back into battle mode, either hold aux and swing or by using the swing on. Um, so it lets you, gives you both options. So you can use your saber or what you're used to with the buttons, or you can go into battle mode and do everything with gesture controls. Um, so uh, I'm really excited to have this out for everybody. Um, you know, if you, if you have questions while testing, post them in the TRA. If you run into anything, post them in TRA. Also, OS5 does have other changes that are being tested. Um, definitely read uh, Frederick's post and what else is in there. Um, and if you come across anything different in the OS, different with styles, 
um, outside of battle mode itself, post those as well. Um, because part of getting out of alpha testing is having enough people look at everything so that we can then move into beta. Once we're done with beta testing, then this becomes the standard OS um, and these features get built in. So um, more to come. Uh, I do have the full write-up on TRA. Um, I'm also going to put a link in the bottom of the description of this video uh, with a link to all the write-up because th there is a lot involved um, just in explaining everything and getting everybody to understand it. Um, so definitely take some time to read through everything, make sure you understand it. Um, you're going to have to pull down the zip file from GitHub. I have instructions for that as well in the write-up. Um, but, um, you know, check it out. I hope you guys like it. So thanks a lot. More to come.